I had always been interested in catch wrestling, historically speaking. Through friends of friends in wrestling, discovered that it was still going on in Wigan, in Aspel, and that Roy Wood was now teaching it. Catch as cats can wrestling is an old miners sport in the late 1800s, early 1900s. The miners used to come up, up from the mines and if they had a problem with one another or for the fun of it, they'd wrestle in fields. Catch wrestling differs from amateur wrestling mainly because of the rule set. A lot of moves in catch wrestling are submissions, which is completely banned in amateur wrestling. And in amateur wrestling, if you get somebody on the floor, you've got 10 seconds to try to pin them or they stand you up again. But in catch wrestling, if you get somebody on the floor, it's up to them to get up. Catch as catch can essentially just means catch whatever you can. Do what you can to pin or submit this person. One of the most influential exponents of catch wrestling was Wigan native Billy Riley. With a reputation as a fierce submission specialist, following retirement in the late 1940s, Riley would turn his hand to coaching. The old miners he used to wrestle up at the top of pubs, in allotments, and all sorts of places they used to wrestle, and they was always getting moved on. So Billy Riley got maybe half a dozen wrestlers from Wigan, and they built their own gym, which became Riley's gym. Riley's gym would produce some of the most skilled catch wrestlers the world had ever seen. For those that trained under Billy Riley, it was an unforgettable experience. For the first few years, all I did was get hammered because nobody showed you anything. It was like going into a lion's den. All Billy said was, never have your back towards the stove, meaning the fire, because you used to always push, push you into the fire. You'd go, ah, burn your ass, and as your arms went up to hold your ass, he'd scoop you down and slam you and put some on it. It's true as I'm sat here. If you asked somebody to wrestle you, it was like asking them for a fight. It was insulting them. It was just like you weren't good enough to wrestle you and they used to take you on the mat and show you weren't good enough to wrestle you. And I learned to wrestle by watching and listening and picking it up as I went along. A number of Billy Riley's students would also participate in the more financially lucrative world of professional wrestling. Whilst this hybrid form of the sport often lent itself to the theatric, the ability of Riley's men was never under question. Billy Riley wouldn't let you do a show if you couldn't wrestle straight. In this country, you were, weren't allowed in a, a professional wrestling ring unless you could shoot or you were a good amateur wrestler. I can remember going to Melvin Riss. He was a wigger as well, he was a shooter. Hi. And I'd get back in the, after in the dressing room, I'd be sweating and breathing through my eyes. And little, little Melvin there was a lot older than me and hadn't even broken out in a sweat. And it was through the reputation of its students that Riley's gym earned itself the intimidating nickname, the Snake Pit. The Japanese christened it, they were then what christened it the Snake Pit. They said because if you threw a wig and wrestle it, it turned to his belly and bite you. In the 1970s, Roy Wood assumed the running of the Snake Pit from Billy Riley. Today, despite having moved from its original location, the club is still held in high regard as it continues to impart knowledge onto generation after generation of catch wrestling students.